laughing when she comes for you, my friends. Barefoot and babbling in her bloody white gown. She haunts the cemetery looking for men to beguile. If you see her, look away. Once her eyes meet yours, all is lost. You'll be a helpless minion for the woman in white. You'll die for her, kill for her, wreak the vengeance that in life she never could. And if you believe that, I got a bridge in Brooklyn I'd like to sell you. <laughs> I do believe I'm just sozzled enough to take an, an evening drive in the country air. Missing an ear, sir. Must have been torn off by the vehicle. I don't see it around anywhere. Here today, gone tomorrow, <laughs> as it were. No, I'm sorry, sir. I... Fellow likely stepped out in front of a car. Do you think it was an accident? I don't believe so, Henry. Judging by the number of tire tracks, the driver likely backed up and rolled over the victim a number of times. This was murder. All right, thank you. We'll be in touch if we have any further questions. He was cutting through the cemetery, sir, when he found the body lying here. Other than that, he knows nothing. Orville Spruill, 45 years of age. What's this, sir? Looks to be an awl. The victim was likely a leather worker. So what do we do now? We look for the vehicle. Well, sir, isn't it likely long gone by now? It's probably damaged, Henry. And very close by. Well, on foot, sir? Yes. The exercise will do us good. Nothing was stolen? Not as far as I can tell. I don't understand. If no crime was committed... Certainly this is a criminal act. I take it you don't usually display your wares in such a fashion? Of course not. Someone broke in last night and fiddled with my meat. It's quite elaborately done. The, the Eiffel Tower? It's ingenious, really. You find this funny, do you? Not at all. I'm just saying, look at all the attention it's getting. Is it not... Free advertising. Look, someone broke into my store. You know, all that food? Now I gotta throw it out. Who else has access to the store? No one. I own the building. I ran out the adjacent storefronts to a bookseller and a hat maker. We live in the apartments above our stores. And there was no signs of forced entry? None. I, I have no idea how the intruder got in. Mr. Peach, what's your relationship with your tenants like? Excellent. They love me. Mr. Peach overstates my affection for him, and the rent increase hasn't helped. You raised your rent? For the second time this year. Did you have anything to do with the goings-on inside his store? What are you talking about? Well, somebody rearranged his wares in bizarre displays. Towers of beef upon pork, shingles of mutton, columns of sausage. <clears throat> I can assure you that wasn't me, but something odd occurred in my store as well. Oh, really? Look what they did to my books. All the spines are facing in. Meat sculptures? Are you seriously asking me this? I'm just doing my job, man. Then you should leave me to do mine, so I can earn enough to cover this exorbitant rent increase. Mr. Peach raised your rent as well. Mm-hmm. Did you argue with him about it? I complained vehemently. And I suspect Mr. Peach has engaged in some sort of campaign of mischief in order to rattle me. Look! I don't understand. Oh, 
Does this look like emu to you? I've never seen an emu before. My feathers have all been rearranged and mislabeled. I see. Come on, lads, put some muscle into it. My grandmother could do better. I'm not sure shouting at them will help them go any faster, Henry. What do you recommend? Perhaps you could help them. Sir. All right. All right. Ha! Ah. Mr. Sproul's ear. We have our murder weapon. And soon, we will have the murderer. Run down by an automobile. You're thinking it's murder? The evidence thus far points to a deliberate killing. I did some digging on your victim. What did you find? Nothing particularly noteworthy. Orville Sproul was a bachelor who made leather goods. His neighbor said he kept to himself. They have no idea why anyone would harm him. Was he robbed? There's money in his wallet. Sir? I've traced that license plate. Who's the owner? Mr. Charlie Hall. I knew you coppers would find me. A little quicker than I imagined. Are you admitting you murdered Orville Sproul? Yes. I, I mean, no, no. I, I hit him in my car, but it wasn't my fault. Whose fault was it, then? The woman in white. I beg your pardon? It's a local legend. I, I never... I never believed it, but I saw her last night. She was near the cemetery. Barefoot and bedraggled with her hollow eyes and gaping ma. And then, bam, my car hit something. I didn't know it was a man until I backed up to, to see what I ran over. Running over him a second time. And, and then I, I panicked. Mother of God. Then ran over him a third time. Had you been drinking by chance? A little, but there's no crime. Unfortunately, no. But leaving the scene of an accident is. What can I do for you, Mr. Peach? It's gotten worse. So very much worse. I would say exponentially worse. What's happened now? Pounds of prime beef ruined. That's my book. Your what? That novel. I wrote that. Your George Crabtree? I love your work. Thank you. Is it selling at all? Uh, not particularly. Right, then let's get inside and we'll get to the bottom of this. <laughs> this is so exciting. We just don't get stores like this in Puzzlinch. Oh, well, this is a wonderful Milner, and... <gasps> oh, my! They certainly do things differently in the big city. Indeed, they do. Shall we continue? Yes, yes. Do you think a murder charge will stick? According to Mr. Hall, a ghostly woman in white orchestrated the car accident, which is either deliberate fabrication or a figment of his imagination. Hall may try to use his intoxication as an excuse. Regardless, Charlie Hall killed Orville Sproul with his car. Oh. J just a moment. Detective Murdoch. Oh, Miss Hart, yes. I see. Right. Thank you. Uh. Charlie Hall did not kill Orville Sproul with his car. According to Miss Hart, Mr. Sproul was already dead when Mr. Hall hit him with his car. He'd been stabbed in the chest. I saw her with 
my own eyes. The woman in white. What you're talking about, Captain? Sir, may we help you? I saw the woman in white last night. She was wandering between the graves, staring with those vacant eyes. I saw her, and she saw me. I feared for my life. That sounds like the woman Charlie Hall saw last night. Are you up for a stroll through the graveyard? Sir. The premises have been thoroughly searched. There's no signs of forced entry. Correct. And the locks have been changed. Nobody can gain access to your businesses without these keys. Thank you. So there should be no more mischief. Well, unless that perpetrator slipped me through the walls. Like a phantom. A phantom? Oh, you don't think. No, I don't think it was a phantom. No, it, that is not something a rational member of the Toronto Conservatory would think. So, no, I do not think that. I was sitting over there on the bench when I saw the woman in white. And she was walking in this direction. Then what did you do? Being a God-fearing man, I'm not ashamed to tell you, I ran. Right. Uh, we'll contact you with our findings. Thank you. Perhaps we should speak to the inhabitants in that place. They might know something. Could that be our woman in white? Have you become a believer? I believe I may have just seen a woman. She was wearing white. Movements were strange. Everything about this is strange. Toronto Constabulary. What do you want? I'm Detective William Murdoch. Yes, Clarence Grundy. Again, what do you want? The woman upstairs, is she your wife? Yes, my lovely Camilla. I'd like to have a word with her. No, it's not a good time. Clarence, help! Ah. Good God. Help! Please. It's all right, Miss Police. You're safe now. Camilla! What earth is this? It's for her own good. I highly doubt that. Mr. Grundy, you are under arrest for unlawful restraint. Hold there. I can help you. No. Oh, you don't understand. We understand just fine. You are in need of help. Yes, she is. On that, we agree. Please, please. I'm a somnambulist. Uh, is that another word for murderer? Oh, Camilla. Not again. This is Dr. Julia Ogden, and she is going to be performing a psychological assessment. Oh, um, I'm not feeble-minded. No one said you were. I'm simply here to ensure that you're of sound mind. Do those abrasions hurt? Oh, no, I've, I've grown accustomed to the straps. How long have you been sleepwalking? Since I was 13, and I don't just walk. I do all kinds of things in my sleep. Um, I never remember afterwards, but I've heard the tales. Mrs. Grundy, what did your husband mean when he said, oh no, Camilla, not again? Um, well, I had a cat, and I loved him, but I killed him when I was sleepwalking. Strangled him with my bare hands. Oh, dear. That's why I started using these straps. I was afraid I would do more evil. A man named Orville Sproul has been killed, stabbed in the chest. Witnesses report seeing a woman dressed in white wandering near the cemetery. I don't know anything about that. Were you wearing your restraints the night before last? Oh, um, no. Um, it had just been so long since there was an incident, and we just thought, um, 
well, um, we were of the mind to have intimate relations, so we went without. I, I don't know that dead man. Poor soul. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. Detective Murdoch, I'd like a bit of privacy to further examine Mrs. Grundy. Of course, Doctor. I await your assessment. Please, please, stop. We demand to see the constable. You're surrounded by constables. Pick one. Not just any constable. It has to be him. <gasps> there he is! We need you, George Crabtree. Uh, what can I... What happened to you? He was pushed down the basement stairs by the ghost. There is no ghost. There is. I've heard voices at night. The floorboards creak. There are strange odors. And what exactly would you have me do about these admittedly strange, but absorb perfectly explicable goings on? Investigate. Investigate what? The previous owner of the building. She died. Her name was Gladys Nutter. We think she's haunting us. You need to figure out how to make her leave. Do you have a diagnosis? Camilla Grundy is a somnambulist. Sleepwalking is a legitimate phenomenon. So you believe she murdered Orville Sproul in her sleep? Well, I'm not willing to speculate. Frankly, it would be unethical for me to further discuss the private health concerns of a patient. Patient? Yes, I've decided to serve as Mrs. Grundy's personal physician. And I believe I also know who her personal lawyer will be. Oh. And how goes the mighty ghost hunter? Well, I'm trying to remain objective, Henry. I mean, these people need help. I can't very well ignore them entirely. I'll look through a few records, shuffle a few papers. The least I can do is give the appearance of making an effort. What have you got so far? Gladys Nutter's death certificate, which gives the date of her death, the place of interment, Wisteria Grove and Necropolis, but doesn't provide cause of death. Thank you very much for coming in. Identifying Mrs. Grundy as the woman you saw in your cemetery will help our case tremendously. Glad to help, Detective. Excuse me, sir. You're the caretaker at Wisteria Grove Necropolis, aren't you? I am. Gary Cardinal. Constable George Crabtree, I'm investigating uh, a case that involves a woman buried in your cemetery. There are hundreds buried there. Her name is Gladys Nutter? Oh. You won't find Mrs. Nutter's grave in my cemetery. No, it says here. You won't find it because it's unmarked, like all the graves of suicides. I make it my business to remember them because no one else does. She killed herself? God rest her soul. Hanged herself in her basement. There's no gravestone, but I planted a pine tree there in her memory. Well, thank you, sir. Hang yourself in the basement, which is where the bookseller was shoved down the stairs. Henry, you know what this one is? Dear God, it is a ghost. <laughs> you're so very sure that you're right. Why would Mrs. Grundy... Return home and remove all evidence of her crime if she wasn't conscious of what she had done. Well, I disagree. There are numerous documented cases of people doing bizarre things in their sleep. Preparing elaborate meals, jumping out of windows and attacking loved ones. Mrs. Grundy's actions seemed planned and deliberate, which is why I will be testifying on behalf of the Crown. Well, sleepwalking has been deemed a legitimate defense for other murder suspects, and it should be no different for Mrs. Grundy, which is why I will be testifying for the defense.
successfully argued in at least two prior cases. It is my intention to prove to this court that Mrs. Camilla Grundy was sleepwalking on the night of Orville Spruill's death and is therefore not criminally responsible. Thank you. The prosecution has the floor. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Esteemed members of the jury, the uh, Crown will not insult your intelligence by addressing my learned friend's claims of somnambulism. Instead, we will call to the stand our first expert witness, Detective William Murdoch. Detective Murdoch, Mrs. Grundy has claimed she never met the deceased. Do you dispute that claim? I do. And why is that? My search of the police records has revealed that last year, Mr. Spruill reported Mrs. Grundy to the Toronto Constabulary for shoplifting. Reporting on a shoplifting? And would you consider that motive for murder? I've known people to kill for less. No further questions. Your Honor, the defense requests a recess. Granted. Why did you conceal the fact that you knew Mr. Spruill? Because it looks bad that he reported me to the police. You're right. It gives the appearance you wanted revenge. No, no, not at all. When I told him that I needed the leather for the restraints, he withdrew the charge. Orville was a kind man. Did you and he become friends? He said he would make the restraining device for me if I would just sit and read Walt Whitman to him. Walt Whitman, the poet? Mm-hmm. And Oscar Wilde and Rossetti. We'd spend hours reading and chatting while he worked. He was a sensitive, artistic soul. I take it your relationship was platonic? Oh, completely. I love my husband. And, um, well, I don't really think that Mr. Spruill fancied ladies. We were just friends. <laughs> he was a good friend. I think I've killed my friend. Do you think Mrs. Grundy will be found guilty, sir? If rational minds prevail. How is your investigation coming along? Sir, I believe the ghost of Gladys Nutter is terrorizing the building's tenants. The world has gone mad. Beg pardon, sir? I thought you were attempting a more rational approach this time. Yes, sir, indeed I am. That's why I've come to ask for your help in proving this scientifically. I have in my possession an ingenious invention given me by my father-in-law, which can detect the presence of otherworldly beings. The use of your night vision camera would be very useful. Is that right? Yes. And uh, what's that uh, bolo, bolo? Bolo meter. What does that detect exactly? Infrared heat. Yes. That would be very useful as well. Unless, I suppose it's possible that ghosts don't generate body heat. In fact, most people report feeling a cold chill as a ghost walks by. I suppose I could calibrate it to detect lower than normal body temperatures. Sir, splendid. I accept your offer. You accept? I... All right, George. Yes. All in the name of science. Excellent. I just don't understand why you didn't tell me that Mr. Spruill had reported Mrs. Grundy for stealing. As an officer of the law, I am not obliged to help defense attorneys win cases. <sighs> why are you so sure that Mrs. Grundy is a killer? Julia, I do not wish to fight with you. You should be aiming your ire at Camilla Grundy for lying to you about her association with the victim. She had her reasons for lying, although misguided. I'm sure she also had her reasons for claiming amnesia. Somnambulism! Not amnesia, William!
you take this device, this can detect the presence of ghosts, phantoms, non-humans in general. Uh, Mr. Peach, you take the night vision camera. This can photograph things even hidden in the darkness. Mr. Bland, you keep an eye on the Ouija board. The dead might try to communicate with us through this. And I will operate the bottom, which can reveal invisible entities. Right then, if we're ready, let's get on with it. We are here to contact the spirit of Gladys Nutter. Spirit, please reveal yourself. Do you smell that? A woodsy scent, like pine needles. Pine? Gladys Nutter has a pine tree instead of a headstone at her grave. Uh, Gladys Nutter, are you here with us? Give us a sign. Oh, my God. That's her. We have her. Wait till Detective Murdoch sees this. Mr. Cardinal, describe what you witnessed on the night in question. I was enjoying the moonlight after doing my rounds, and then I saw her. She was wandering around, muttering to herself, and staring with empty eyes. Now, do these seem to be the actions of someone in control of their own capacities? Or rather, someone who's stumbling about in the wilderness of their own unconscious mind? Now, Mr. Hall, you left the tavern around midnight? The witching hour, I, I did indeed. I see. And can you tell us what happened as you were driving along Shad Carey Bend? I turned a corner, and there she was, lingering by the cemetery. Her gown was pure white, white as the driven snow. And then... Cross-examination, Counselor. Mr. Hall, you state that Mrs. Grundy's gown was pure white, White as the driven snow. It was ghostly and, and, and gleaming in the, in the, under the full moon. And you spotted her immediately before you ran over Mr. Sproul, is that correct? He was already dead. The body was lying in the road. <laughs> the Crown suggests that Mrs. Grundy stabbed Mr. Sproul just before he was run over by Mr. Hall. Now, if that is the case, then how did Mrs. Grundy manage to keep her gown pure white, white as the driven snow, after she allegedly stabbed a man to death? Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> A drunkard's hazy recollection about the color of a woman's frock can hardly be deemed reliable testimony. Two witnesses have placed Camilla Grundy at the scene of Orville Sproul's murder. Why else would she have been there without nefarious intent? Uh, Your Honor, I intend to ask Mrs. Grundy this exact question while she is under hypnosis. 
In order to retrieve Mrs. Grundy's recollections of the night in question, Dr. Ogden will be hypnotizing her. Now, if we could please clear the gallery and dim the lights. You feel warm and safe. You're awake, but calm. Your eyes are growing heavy. As I count down, three, two, one. Now you're walking through the graveyard on a full moon night. Tell me what you see. my client step down mrs grundy <sighs> lucifer was our cat a uh, tabby and uh, what became of this cat i remind you mr grundy you are under oath camilla killed him while she was sleepwalking strangled him with her bare hands. <laughs> Please, have mercy on my good Camilla. She's, she's a good woman. She's harmless while she's awake and, and, and not responsible for her actions while asleep. The prosecution rests. The court will take a recess. You may step down, Mr. Grundy. We need to find some way to prove that you weren't in control of your actions that night. I do have an idea. How long do you expect the jury to waste their time watching this murderer sleep? We are well aware of how eagerly you wish to condemn this poor woman, but the judge has ruled to allow this process. We must simply allow it to play out. proves nothing. Patience, counselor. Lovely. I do have sleep. <sighs> Mere play actor. You can't really expect us to leave you asleep. Counselor? Uh, no, Your Honor, not, not at this time. <laughs> this court is adjourned. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant, Camilla Grundy, not guilty of the murder of Orville Spool. <sighs> the ghost of Gladys Nutter. Revealing herself, spirit! Get out of my house! Get out of my house! Sir, I told you! George, perhaps the addition of radio frequency to the bolometer has enabled it to... Uh, enabled it to see what's behind the wall. Get out of my house, get out of my house. 
Pine needles. Your name is Perry Solano? It is. How did you end up living behind the walls of Mr. Peach's building? It's Mrs. Nutter's building, not his. You knew Gladys Nutter? Very well. She wanted to rent out her building, so she hired me to convert it into three separate businesses. You then took it upon yourself to torment the residents after she died? She promised she'd leave me the property in her will. I was like a son to her. So what, she went back on her word? The will was never found. So the city sold off my property. It's not your property. I know that building better than anyone. Climbing behind the walls, searching for the missing will at night. But you never found it. So you decided to scare the residents out of the building. It was a brilliant plan. And when I heard that the famous writer, Constable George Crabtree, was on the case, uh, I knew my plan would work. I've heard you believe in all sorts of otherworldly things. <laughs> I suppose I should congratulate you on Mrs. Grundy's acquittal. Yes, you should. Congratulations. Thank you. Even if Mrs. Grundy was sleepwalking when she murdered Orville Spruill, shouldn't there be consequences? Well, you're entitled to your beliefs. There has to be something I've missed. Let it go. Something about Mrs. Grundy's relationship with Orville Spruill. <sighs> what led him to the graveyard at that time of night in the first place? And how did she happen to be there? At the same time, you're torturing yourself. Perhaps you just need to accept that you're not always right. Yes, hello, operator. Detective Llewellyn Watts on Maitland Street, please. Is the last of the evidence retrieved from Orville Spruill's residence. Thank you, Watts. I realize my late night request for help is highly unusual. Yes, considering the case has already been tried. I simply cannot rid my mind of the feeling that there is more to this murder than meets the eye. I could help you if I knew what you were looking for. Oh, Oscar Wilde. Therein lies the rub, detective. I have no idea. Well, what if I return home? Saw that pocket watch swinging. You killed Lucifer. You strangled it with your watch chain. Admit it. I, I, I confess. I did it. I. She loved that cat more than me. And I. And Orville, you killed him too, didn't you? Confess. This is Grundy. Stop. You sent the note to Orville Sproul, didn't you? It was you who sent the message. Answer me, or I will let your wife finish her business. But they were having an affair. So I got rid of him. I knew they wouldn't convict you, Camilla. Mr. Grundy, you are under arrest for the murder of Orville Sproul. Morning, Mr. Solano. Morning, Constable. You're still here. 
The store owners agreed to drop all charges if I repair the damage I caused and do some building maintenance. That's not much of a job. Do it again. There's a creaky floorboard in my shop. As soon as I'm done here, I'll head on over. I'll catch my death if you don't seal these drafty windows. Mr. Solano, I believe you fared better a phantom. Congratulations on winning your case, Effie. Congratulations on solving yours, George. Mrs. Crabtree. Mr. Crabtree. Thank <laughs> you. 